When I get involved with uh, entrepreneurs and startups in Austin, um, I'd like to imagine that what I'm bringing to the table is some experience starting and running companies. Um, there's been a number of companies that I've, I've done exactly that at. Um, some private, some public, so I think I've got a breadth of experience. Um, that said, every startup is different, and so sometimes that applies really well, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, I'd have to say operationally, that's sort of where my strength is. And now on the other side of the table as a venture capitalist, um, I can apply that to a whole bunch of companies simultaneously. First and foremost, we are Texas oriented and in particular we're Austin oriented. So it would, we say that we go to the edges of Texas, but all of our deals, and we have 14 right now, are in Austin. We like to be the first money in. We like to be the first professional investor uh, in a deal, so we're very early stage. Um, we'll do seed stage type of investments all the way up to you know, larger Series A. And if you know, somebody bootstraps a company and is looking for liquidity later on and we can be that first investor um, by helping provide that liquidity to as an entrepreneur, we do that as well. So high tech, Austin, first money in, some place where we can roll up our sleeves and contribute, that's what we look for. There's an ideal model and then there's always variations that sort of asymptotically approach that ideal. So we'd love to see you know, experienced entrepreneurs that we know uh, chasing a, a market that is clearly valuable and growing with a product versus a service um, that's well-defined and, and out there enough to have some traction, some fit that we can talk to, um, and proof points on the, the go-to-market motion, the distribution of that product. If companies have a, a variation of that, then I'd say that they're ready to take, to use other people's money and begin to scale and grow some of those aspects of the business. I think if they're ahead of um, having a product, it's a little bit harder because we don't know how much more it's going to take to build that. If they're ahead of distribution, we don't know what the cost to serve that market is, so it's a little bit ahead of you know, scaling up distribution and sales. So a little bit of signal um, in the, the various components of the business model is probably the right time to come talk to somebody like Silverton. And if you're a little early but something's compelling about it, we would never um, not listen and there's always exceptions to the ideal case. Some of the cooler startups we have in town right now, um, you know, and, and I think we're super lucky to have a bunch of them. Um, I'm really excited about a company called Socialware. Um, I think they're, they're setting their market, which is financial services, on fire by really allowing those kind of businesses to use social media. Very relevant given what's happening with Facebook and, and, and whatnot. There's a company called Sparefoot, which is uh, uh, a bunch of young guys that are innovating in a market that um, is every day surprising by the acceleration that they have in a, in a space that's otherwise pretty sleepy. There's some younger companies like uh, Black Locust, like Copper Egg, uh, Famigo, and yes, I'm talking mostly about Silverton portfolio companies, but they're the companies I know the best. One thing I would say is that we're starting to see a cycle of older companies um, begin to generate some of the younger companies in town. and. Uh, what I get especially excited about is this next wave of entrepreneurial activity that's going to be um, accelerated by um, some liquidity, uh, you know, some infrastructure like Capital Factory bringing folks together, um, and some experience that folks have gone through the cycle once or twice um, as well. And those are companies I don't know what they are yet, but I'm just generically excited about that. I think Austin's attractive for startups um, you know, moving here, thinking about moving here, getting excited about that for a number of reasons. One, I think it's really easy to appreciate Austin outside of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, whether that's music or whether that's uh, the lifestyle, it's a, it's a great city completely independent of the high tech. Um, given that we have a high tech ecosystem here, it kind of makes it a no brainer. But that said, it's a you know, fantastic city compared to a lot of other ones to start a family in. Um, entrepreneurs, you know, they've probably got their own startup baby now. They'll probably have other babies later. Um, I think the, the cost of living in general, while we'll see how that goes, is still probably cheaper than elsewhere. And I think if you add all that stuff together, especially with some of the, the first experience that a lot of folks have, which is things like South by and uh, ACL, it's kind of a yeah, it's kind of an easy decision. I think our birthright in terms of a, uh, a community is to sort of the, 
dominate the next gen enterprise 2.0 agenda, much like the West Coast has dominated some of the consumer focused agenda. But that said, I still see consumer companies uh, springing up and, and really great talent um, that wasn't here even a year ago, um, you know, starting companies. And so it's a good mix, but I'd say we're strongest in traditional enterprise and next gen enterprise. Yeah, I think if you are a confident, high quality investor, um, you know, more capital and more investors don't make you nervous. I think um, what they do is they propel an ecosystem that you participate in better, faster, stronger into the future. Um, and I, I, I think that's so much better than any risk of competition or, or oversubscription of, of particular deals that I'm, yeah, I'd welcome that. Um, but I think less confident investors you know, in other places in the country might fear that sort of competition. I just think the greater good is, is a lot easier to concentrate on.